Alright, it is finally coding time. We'll start by building a very, very bare bones authentication app with our existing React app here just to show how, how you can use pocket based authentication. And we won't be diving into any of the nitty gritty user interface stuff. So let's go and make our auth.js component here and let's export default function auth and this is going to return auth for now in the app.js file let's just include the auth component here there so auth will show up here in our app and realize that we don't have we didn't have to do dot slash because we're using absolute imports now and then here in the auth app let us make let's think about what we're going to do here so first we're going to just see if the user is logged in or not i can make an indicator for that using h1 tags say log in so is this true or false and it looks like that and just zoom in a little so how the, the way you can detect if users are logged in or not is via this pb dot auth state variable and i can just go to the documentation just to show you what i'm talking about so pb it, that's basically the handle that we just exported from our pocket base.js file and we, it has a property called auth store that has all of the different properties we can use to check the user's current authentication state so we have auth store token model is valid so here let back in our code we will import our pocket base handle here that we've exported from pocket base.js so let us import that import pb from the library slash pocket base and then here we will just we'll just do pb.auth store you can see that intellisense already knows that there's this property and we can do dot is valid so this tells us if the current authentication state is valid or not and this is just a boolean value so we have to do dot to string to make it show up in the html and sure enough it tells us logged in is false now let's go ahead and make that input form so users can log in to our page and so we should have two input fields and a submit button one for email slash username and one for password so here i'm just gonna paste a snippet here it's just, it's just a form and has two inputs and a button and it looks like this so bare minimum doesn't have any functionality yet and of course what we could do is we could use react state and we could do something like this this is the example that i have here you can have two different state variables one for username one for password but i'm not going to do that instead i'm going to make things a little bit simpler by using a library a framework called react hook form so what you're going to do is do yarn add react dash hook dash form and it's going to provide us with a library that we can use to manage forms better and once you have that installed you can import this uh, hook called use form from react hook form there we go and once you have react hook form installed you can restart the react server and bring that away and you can destructure two items from the use form hook like so so you can get the, re the register function and the handle submit function from the use form hook and those are two different functions and i'll show you how to use them in just a second now for understanding purposes i'm just gonna for now just log the register function to console and to execute the register function you have to like provide it with a name we're gonna make two register functions in just a second one for email and one for password but first let me log that to the console and refresh this so you can see that the register function returns a name on blur on change and basically we're just gonna feed all of these properties from the register hook to our input fields so like how you would have to go and manually set the value to state variable and then use on change to set the e.target value to the, the react set username hook now with register it automatically does that for you you just have to run this register function and it'll just generate all of the functions that has to be fed to the HTML component. So what you could do is you could just destructure the register function here using the three dots. Just destructure, register, and just feed that to the input field. Just do the same word. And of course, you're going to have to destructure this using ES6 syntax. Just save that. So now we have the two input fields here controlled in React state. But how are we going to print out the values that are in the input fields? Usually what you would do is you would go to on the form and do on submit and set it to some handle submit function here, right? But remember that use form provides us with this handle submit function as well. So usually in your handle submit function, you need to have like handle submit and you have to take in, you have to take in an E and then you have to do E dot prevent 
default, something like that to prevent the form from refreshing the page and performing its default behavior because now we're controlling everything from React, we don't need the refresh. But because we have handle submit from use form, we actually don't need to do this. We just have to put handle submit from the use form hook and just put it here. And it automatically does the e.prevent default for us. And it takes in a, an argument here. And that's going to be our own function. I had a function here called function login. We can just make a blank function for now and put login in here. And then login takes in like this, this custom function that you fit into the handle submit function is going to take in a parameter called data. And you can just console.log data. So data is coming from the handle submit function, which is also coming from use form. And I can log that to the console. And I'm going to refresh this. We can do some email, some password, hit login, and that gives us our data object. But how do we log users in with pocket base? Now, if I head over to the documentation here, this exact line tells us how to do it, which is await pb.collection users .auth with password. So I'm just yanking that line, go to our code, and we're going to make this function async, just paste it in here. And then there, so we do pb.collection and then we specify the user's collection auth, is pa auth with password. Obviously, we can't just hard code the username email. We just have to do data.email. And here we do data.password. And remember, data is coming from there. It's coming from React hook form. Save that. And then we also want loading state. So I can just make const is loading, set loading equals the use state. And then we start off loading with false. And then we could just do set loading true here. And then once we're done, we just set loading to false. And that should be able, we should be able to log in this way. I'm going to just test it out, just refresh the page. And I forgot to use to implement the loading state. So we do have set loading to true and false afterwards, but we, we're not reading from the is loading value anywhere in our code. So here, what you could do is you could just do if it's loading. So if it's loading, then we want to just do p tags and just say loading. And then here in the button, let's just have disabled equals to if it's loading, then we disable the button. Here, we also just say if it's loading, then I'm just going to use a ternary operator here. If it's loading, then we just say loading. If it's not, then say login. So that's your turn your operator. Let's go ahead and test our code. So I'm going to just test at gmail.com. I foresee problems already because we don't really have users in our users collection. You can see that it's, it's empty. So let's try to log in. It says loading and it gives us problems. So we have to do something like a try catch block in here. So let's just, <laughs> I guess we could, let me think about this. Just try here and just put all of this inside of it. And then let's catch E and then just console log E for now, maybe. Or we could like prompt. And then let's refresh, blah, blah, blah. Log in. It tells us, okay, maybe not prompt, maybe just alert. I <laughs> forget the names of the JavaScript prompts. So it tells us client response error failed to authenticate. All right, sure. So let's go and make a user here. We can have the email to be what email we want user at gmail.com password. Let's have one, two, three. And let's create the length must be between eight and nine. So if you ever get this annoying issue that it forces you to have a password of length between eight and 72, we could go and customize this by click on edit collection. Let's go to options here and username password enabled. So email slash password here. Actually, no, it's down here in general minimum password length. I think minimum requires us to have like length of five, if not wrong. Yeah, it's five. So we have to do five. Doesn't let us go past that. Below that, I mean. So user at gmail.com, one, two, three, four, five. Let's create that user. So now that we have that user, we can refresh the page. Just do user at gmail.com and then do one, one, two, three, four, five. Let's hit login. And you can see that logged in is now true. And so that's amazing. So instead of saying logged in is true, if we wanted to say logged in as which user and the email, so we can just print the email out by changing this dot is valid. We can change it to pb dot auth store. You know what we will say if this is true, if is logged in is true, then we're going to do pb dot auth store dot model dot email there. So it should say user at gmail.com. Let us just move this entire thing 
outside of this function and just say is logged in and we have to make that constant somewhere up here and we can do const is logged in is there we go instead of is logged in it should be is valid though there so not, not model just is valid so there we go and let's find a way for the user to log out right now so i'm going to just say if it's logged in so if is logged in then we're going to have to return logged in as whatever the email is and then let's just wrap this in react fragments so if it's logged in return this and return a logout button here log out if it's if it's not, then we're going to return this. This this is going to be the login page. So here, let's just change this to please log in. And there we go. The form, all right, just making sure everything sh should be working fine. If I go back to the page, we can see logged in as this user. If we click logout, not, nothing happens because we need our logout function. We can make that function your function, logout. Now we know this logout function doesn't actually have to be an asynchronous function because it's not necessarily making an API call. It's just clearing the, the cookies that has the login information in the local storage. So we can do pb.authstore. Just check the documentation. So you see pb.authstore clear. It's not an asynchronous function because it's just modifying the local database, the local storage. I mean, so we do dot clear, and it's gonna we're gonna see some problems in just a while so if i click on logout it's actually logged out right now although it still says login logged in if i refresh the page though it's logout it's, that's weird oh that's because i don't have the logout function set to this logout button so on click equals to logout so if I click on the button, it does nothing. It still says logged in. But if I refresh the page, you can see it's actually logged out. And that's and the reason for that is because this is, like I said, this logout function, this is not clear. It's just modifying local storage. It isn't triggering a re-render in React. So React doesn't know to re-render and refresh to say that, oh, something's changed about React state and we, have, we, we should log out. Because React state didn't change, right? The local storage changed in the browser. So to fix this, we're going to have to manually force React to re-render and update. So what I could do is just make it dummy state variable. So dummy set dummy equals to you state some string. And then let's just do set dummy to, I don't know, math.random maybe. And then we can just do zero here maybe. There, there we go. So now if I go and log in here, user at gmail.com, and let's click on logout. Now you can see that it refreshes and re-renders the page. And with that, we're basically done with our bare bones and basic authentication app. Now I know we haven't got to doing the registration page and everything yet, but that's because to register a new user, we basically have to add a new row, a new record to this user's table. And adding a record to the user's table is no different from adding a row to, an to any other pocket-based table. It's just the same procedure. And so I'm gonna be adding that in a later video. But first, I'm gonna, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can make a custom hook to perform all of the login and logout functions here because you, see, you can see that our auth app, it's supposed to just contain the front end and the UI components, but we have a whole bunch of code, like 50% of the code in here is React state and a whole bunch of functionality code. So I'm gonna show you how you can extract all of the code for the functionality here and refactor it into its own hook. And then after that, we're gonna do the registration page.